Hey everyone, Andrew Stormer here and welcome back to another computer tutorial where you learn everything you need to know about how to spec your own gaming or YouTube video editing build. And today we're talking first CPU coolers but also case fans and fan controllers because they all kind of go together and they have a ton of overlapping specs and everything. And there are a ton of specs on PC Part Picker, which we're back on, that you don't need to worry about at all. So I'm just gonna go through and show you the few things that you actually need to pay attention to. So first thing here, uh, height, that only matters if you're worried about it being way too big, bearing, we don't care. Type, that's the socket that it fits on which it kind of matters, but you don't really have to pay attention to it because most CPU coolers work with most CPUs, like their little bracket things to put them on the motherboard. They uh, work with pretty much every CPU socket out there, so you don't really have to worry about that. And if you use your little, um, it's not up right now, your compatibility filter, it'll take care of it for you. Water cooled, we'll talk about that in a second. Fanless, we don't care at all. And then over here, you can see RPM, also don't really care about noise level. You only care about that if you're trying to make a build that's super quiet. I mean, you don't wanna get something that's like 40 decibels or whatever, but you don't really have to worry about that either. And that is most of it. The one spec that PC Part Picker doesn't include that actually does matter on here is CFM. And if we click over on the most popular CPU cooler of all times, this one has a CFM of 82.9, and that's cubic feet per minute. So that's a good amount of CFM, and CFM basically means if you didn't understand cubic feet per minute, that means that's that many cubic feet moving through your entire computer at the same time, or at least through your CPU cooler. And so that's the biggest one that you have to pay attention to. And if you're using PC Part Picker, you have to click on every individual CPU to find out how much CFM you have. And basically the higher CFM you have, the more air is gonna go through, the higher the airflow, the more cooling it's gonna happen. Basically, if you have a super hot CPU or some uh, crazy, massive beefy CPU or anything that's gonna overheat a ton, get a super high CFM cooler or even go water cooled or something, but I'd recommend somewhere around 100 if you're doing some like huge CPU, but for your average CPU, like if you're doing a Ryzen 4 core or something like that, this is plenty, this is fine, but you really don't want your computer to overheat. And if you are planning on overclocking, you do need more CFM. Uh, with a fan cooled, on this one you can see here that this is where it mounts to the CPU and you need thermal paste and some coolers come with thermal compound not all of them do some even come with it built onto it and you peel off a little sticker and you stick it on there and you don't even have to worry about your little glue thingy whatever at all but uh sometimes they don't and if you just put straight metal to metal that's not going to be so great so you do need thermal paste to mount a cpu cooler onto a CPU. Fan CPU coolers, they have a heat sink. That's all these little metal grate things here that just spreads out all the heat away from the CPU. And now you might not want a huge CPU cooler because it might not fit in your case, but the bigger sort of the better because it's the more heat that goes away from your CPU. And also the bigger the heat sink, the bigger the fan you can put on, which also easily increases the CFM and all that fun stuff. This CPU right here is a top mounted one. So where you have your motherboard here, your CPU, and then this one, the heat sink comes up this way and the fans on the side here, where there are worse coolers that have 
this like circular heat sink on top of it and the fan is slapped right on top. And if you look into airflow, which in your case you need airflow, in airflow in a case, you want it to be an easy line of sight. So usually you have a case and here's your front. You have some fans here intaking. You have your CPU over here and you either have fans up here or on the back or both. And so you want your air to come in the side and then why this cooler, like why a top mounted fan cooler would be better than a front mounted cooler is that having the fan on the side it can continue the airflow through the entire thing or you could even turn it this way and you can have it come up and outwards instead of where you have air coming in this way and a top mounted one it's like getting sucked in but then somehow it has to make its way out and then go out i don't know it's that's why I wouldn't take one and why they can overheat more. Also, they have push-pull type things. And so on this one, how you would set up a push-pull is if you go back to the example where you have the CPU mounted there and you have your fan here, this one is pushing the air through the CPU a push-pull system, like if we go over to here, this is the one that I actually have. It has two fans on both sides of the heat sink. So you have a fan here and then you add a fan here. And that means this fan here is pushing air through the heat sink. And this fan here on the other side is pulling it out of the heat sink. So that's another way that you can direct airflow through that easier. Now, there are water coolers. So if we come back down here to the water coolers, you have no, which would be your fans, and then you have yes, and you have all these different sizes. And now these ones, these don't mount straight to the CPU. They mount to the CPU and part of the case. So the size here is the mounting place for the case. If you get a cooler like this that's too big, that doesn't fit your case, it's obviously not gonna work. Here's a random liquid cooler. It's uh, 75 CFM, so I personally wouldn't recommend this one, but just as an example to see what they look like, you have, on this one, there's two fans here and the little mount for the CPU. These tubes have water in them and they circulate through and behind these fans here, is a radiator right here. This is a radiator, so the water goes in, it goes by where the CPU is and the CPU contact point. It The water heats up, it goes out the other pipe, goes through the radiator, spreads the heated water throughout the radiator, and then the fans blow that hot air out of the system. And why water-cooled is better than a fan-cooled with a heat sink is because all the heat gets redirected from the CPU. The CPU has all this heat buildup, but then with the water-cooled, it takes it from here, from this location, and sends it way up here to a completely different location. When a heat sink it spreads it out from the CPU, but it doesn't do like the greatest job because the heat sink parts way out here are gonna be cooler than the ones in here that are closer. And they can, it can kinda leak back in a tiny bit, but you don't have to go water cooled on every single build you do. If you're doing a two core or four core processor or anything, you don't need a liquid cooler. It's not, uh, it's not gonna make enough heat. It's not powerful enough to make that heat that will overheat your CPU and completely destroy it or crash your system, one of the two. Uh, but liquid cooling is more for the ones that have like 18 cores, eight cores, whatever, something like that. You kind of just have to use your judgment just Basically, the better the CPU, 
the probably the better cooler you should use and the higher CFM. What's nice about coolers like these is that these ones are all pre-done. You just screw it into the case, screw it onto the cooler mount on your motherboard. You put your thermal paste, whatever on, not in that order, and you're good to go. They make water cooler things with your own tubing. So you can actually custom make your tubing to fit an area and you buy a pump to do it. So it's a do it yourself. It's not an all in one. Like this build right here, which not sponsored by whoever that is. And I'm not sponsoring him. I'm not saying go check him out. I don't know him at all. This is just a random build I pulled up with this uh, example where you have a pump here that pumps your water, which you could color, like in this case is blue, and you make custom tubing that goes around your system and you have a mount for your CPU. And if you really wanted to, you could even take off the heat sinks and fans of your graphics card and put one of these water cooled plates on your graphics card and water cool your graphics card even. And you can have the water pump through your CPU and through your graphics card and all the way back to your pump or and even through your radiators and whatever else to cool it off. And this is a pretty crazy build because it looks like there's two giant radiators there, each with three fans, which is insane. This is just an example of one of the things that you can do. You can get pretty crazy. Now these things do get pretty expensive if you do want to but they do look pretty cool. Like how cool would it be to have a blue exposed tube throughout your entire system cooled computer? That'd be pretty cool. Those are cooling options for your CPU, but there's so many uh, specs that intertwine with case fans that I'm gonna hit them at the same time. So if we jump over to a case fan here, the cooler didn't have this kind of size, but it kind of did with the liquid cooling. Size for a case fan just means the size for the mounts that it the fan mounts on your case. So your case, when you're looking at it, it tells you somewhere in the specs all the, your different case fan mount sizes. So you look at that, and then from that, if you do want to add more case fans, because cases oftentimes do come with built-in fans, but if you did want to have like higher CFM case fans or you wanted to go LED, which you can do, you can do some RGB fan build or whatever on your computer, but you can replace all your fans, you can add more, and with the specs of the size, you can go in here, choose out a size, and then choose it. Another spec of case fans is PWM, aka a four pin, I just call them four pins, um, and I think the no means it's a three pin, I'm pretty sure it's a three pin, uh, but the difference between a three pin and a four pin is a four pin allows the motherboard to automatically change the RPM that that fan is running. When a three pin, the fan just runs at its set constant speed all the time. Then once again, you have the color of LED, you have the size, RPM, airflow, your CFM, whatever, your decibels, noise level, blah, 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 no one cares. On just one of these random fans, it has static pressure. Don't care about it. I wouldn't worry about it. If you want to get super in-depth with specs, you can go look it up yourself, but I don't care. And now fan controllers. These you don't need to have, but probably the biggest reason why you would need to have one is that your motherboard only has a limited amount of spaces of pins for case fans. And if you have enough fans, you might run out of ports on your motherboard for case fans. So how you fix that is you put in a fan controller in your computer. But nowadays with not having 5.25 external bays, you might not even be able to have one in there. If you choose a case though, or still have 
external bays like your disk drives that are 5.25 inches, then you can have a fan controller in them. At least most of them are 5.25. Like this one here you see is a 3.5. These ones here are two 5.25s. Um, it just really depends. And some of them are touch screen, some of them have light, some of them can control your LED color, some of them can't. You'd have to go through the software to control it. And some of them support four pins, um, some of them don't. It really doesn't matter that much because if you are controlling a little slider or something of how fast your fan is going, that controller just limits the amount of power that that fan is actually getting. So a three pin through a fan controller can have its RPM changed so it really doesn't matter if you're for sure doing a fan controller i don't think you need four pins don't quote me on it but i'm pretty dang sure you don't need a four pin to change your rpm speed if you have a fan controller you might need a four pin to change like the led color or something but i mean who needs leds right? I mean, RGB though is kind of cool. So channels, that's how many different fans can be plugged in to the fan controller and be changed at the same time. And then channel wattage, that's just the amount of power that it gets. Who cares? So an example here, this is a super simple one, but this one just has six little sliders that you can change the speed. And that's it. I prefer the um, not touch screen, just a little slider thing. Um, I really don't want to mess with some giant radio slapped in the side of my computer to control my stupid fans. But I mean, if you want, you can. That's going to do it on all this fan stuff. And you can see that pretty much it's just CFM that you really have to worry about and sizes or whatever else just dependent on your case and that's it it's pretty simple there's just a lot of different options in there where you could go a uh, normal fan and heat sink versus liquid cooled versus uh, build your own water cooled or whatever so you can do a lot and there's a lot of options you could do leds if you wanted to but there you go that's all the stuff that you need to know on fans and coolers and all that stuff. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.